Luke said you ought to get up early in the morning and go talk to God. Have your time with God. Yeah. Well, I do that. Yeah. I have a spot on my porch. And I'm telling you, just before the sun comes up, sometimes it's 2 in the morning, sometimes it's 3, 4, 5, 6. But I talk to God. And I pray. Listen, I pray for y'all. I think I called every one of you by name just about. I pray for Blair, Mississippi. I pray for Brother and Sister Marlo. I pray for everybody and everything I can possibly think of. And I thank you for every blessing that he's ever given me. I thank you for walking with me hand in hand, leading and guiding me. Listen, I look to the hills. That's in Psalms. That's in Psalms. Yes. I look to the hills, which cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord. From the Lord. And uh, Brother Rhodes just absolutely charged me up today. You see that message that he preached? That was for me. I don't know if you got anything, but it was for me. Yeah. You start talking about a hedge, a covering, a shield, the covering of the Lord, the blood of Christ running over you. Let me go back to what I was saying real quick. I got out on the porch the other morning, uh, Saturday morning, and I was praying. I felt to pray. I needed to pray. It got a lot of things going on. I needed to pray. And I was praying. And I was touching God. And something come over me. Okay? I made him aware of every one of my needs. I told him I'm sorry if I've sinned or made him feel bad or sad. I told him, hey, I talk to God this way. Sure. I don't want nothing between me and him. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. I, I made him aware of every request I could think of. The churches, the pastors, the leaders. And I said, something came to me and said, now worship me. Worship me. Yeah. Yeah. Out here on your porch. I don't care if a car can, Worship me. Come on. And I began to worship God. Oh, my God, I worship you, Lord. Oh, I worship you, Lord. I give you the highest praise that I know, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, I worship you, Lord. That next thing I know, God gave me a song. By this time, Sherry done got up. And she was sitting on the couch. And I came in, and I was singing this song. I just got it, fresh off of the, fresh off of the oven. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I turned to her and I said, what do you think about that? She said, I think you need to write that down. Write it down. So I sat down and I wrote it down. God gave me a song about worshiping him, about the almighty God, the first, the last, the same, the one that was in the beginning, the one that'll be in the end, the one that gave his son to cleanse you and I's sin. He gave his son, the man who knew no sin. Get that. He knew no sin. Had no sin in his life. But he became sin. He might be the life to wash us clean. Yes. Yes. And then I come in here today and Brother Rhodes is talking about the blood and the hedge. And listen, I believe it just the way he preached it. Amen. I believe every time Abraham walked, it was his. I believe every time you're speaking, it's yours. Amen. There you go. Because I have that kind of relationship. Right. Now, if you don't have that kind of relationship with God, I strongly, strongly, I can't say it enough, strongly suggest you get that relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on, glory. Well, what do I have to do, Brother Dean? You have to sell out. You have to sell out. Get rid of the world in your life. Lay down every the sin that so easily besets us. Sell out to the man that died on the cross.
cross and washed your sins away. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, I got to thinking, um, I was telling Brother Langford today that I really, really wanted to get up behind Brother Rhodes today right? because I have a witness to what he was saying. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to be brief. Two and a half years ago, I was, what, I was diagnosed with um, end-stage renal failure. That means my kidneys quit working. And they put me on dialysis. It was called PD dialysis. And that's where they stick a hose, literally, in your stomach. And you have it all the time. It doesn't come out. You don't put it away, put it up. It stays with you. It's the most unhumanly thing I can think of. And uh, so I did that for a year, and I tried to work my job just like home. Thank God I had a boss that made provisions for me to go do what I needed to do right. throughout the day. Right. Well, a year came and went, and that dialysis, the way they were doing it then, wasn't working for me. I kept having infections. And the doctor finally told me, said, if you have one more infection, it can kill you dead. Oh, I said, well, then what do I do? He said, hemodialysis is the only way for you. What does that entail? Well, it entails big needles, surgery. It, it's, it's a lot of stuff I won't go into. Done it for a year and a half. Well, at the point that I started hemodialysis, I was no longer able to work. It took up too much time in the day, yeah. too long. Yeah. So Sherry and I are now faced with a big, big obstacle in our life. Right. See, she's the only one that brings in the money now. Mine's gone. Uh, disability hadn't kicked in yet. Well, it's gonna kick in for a little while. So I told Sherry, I said, I don't know how, I don't know how. No. Do you know how God does things? No. Do you? No. Do you really think you do? No, no. Let me help you with that. No, you don't. And all you need to know is that He does it. He does it. He does it. Now, I started hemodialysis a year and a half ago. Money just got extremely tight. I had to cut the fat. Some of the things that I could afford, I couldn't afford no more. They had to go on down the road. And that's just what I began to do. Gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, out of the blue, yes. here comes Sister Cindy Yeomans, and her and Brother Gene. And they said, Dean, someone asked us to give you this. I can't tell you who it is. I can only tell you that they've known you since you were a boy. That's all they said. And they handed me an envelope. I didn't know what it was until I sat down in my car. And I opened up the envelope. It was five, five, count them. One, two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Uh, from somebody I don't know. I don't know who gave it to me. That was the first time. I don't know. I don't think a month went by. Here comes Sister Cindy again. Had me another envelope. <laughs> Praise God. There's four hundred dollars in that one. Praise Hallelujah. God. Uh, not even another month went by. Here comes Sister Cindy with an envelope. Praise <laughs> God. This one had about three fifty. Yeah. Yeah. A month may have went by, maybe. Here comes Sister Cindy again. You get tired of hearing this because I'm not tired of telling no, you. Yet. No. We're not tired of this. Here comes Sister Cindy again. Here's another envelope. Come on, Dean, tell it. Five hundred dollars. Now listen, if you got the point where I don't work anymore, but God, the hedge, the hedge, the blood, the blood. Come on, my God. Come on. Okay. So He's provided. He's provided through this whole thing. 
Through this whole thing, God has provided for me and my family. And now, two, year, two and a half years ago, I was able to pay a lawn maintenance man to do my yard. It stopped. No money, remember? My neighbor, who runs a lawn business, Brother Pope, do you know him? Dallas? Yeah. I don't know what his experience is with God. I don't. But the man told me, he said, you don't have to pay me a dime. Your yard will never look shabby. I'll take care of it. The man has never missed a cut yet. And when his business was falling off, we talked, and I'd say, Dallas, listen, I can't explain this, and I don't know if you'll understand this, but you're helping one of God's children. That's me. That's me. Yes. I'm blood bulb. Yes. Hey, and I told him, I said, I don't know if you're going to get this or not, Apply the blood. but you're helping a Christian, a son of God. Yes. And I don't care what happens, how bad it gets, you'll always have work. God will always make a way for you because you're helping his children. Did you hear me? Okay. And I'm just hitting the highlights. There's a ton of them. But I'm just kind of trying to hurry it along a little bit. So this month, now Sherry and I, we live on a budget. It's a very tight budget. But God always, I'm telling you, God always, 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 always. you get always, always. provides. Um, we went to uh, the grocery store uh, about a, three weeks ago, maybe. We had a set amount. And listen, when you're on a budget like this, uh -huh. you can't. You can't go overboard. You, can't, buddy. you have to live by it. Amen. So we go shopping, grocery shopping, and we had our list, knew exactly what we wanted, what we had to have, and we start buying it off. And uh, me, I go, honey, don't you think them kids would like some donuts? <laughs> honey, that's not on the list. I know, I know, I know, but... I'm going to put them in here anyway. Maybe there's a way. So, uh, come on, tell it. We drink 1% milk at my house. I don't drink a lot of it because I don't like colored water. But, uh, Amen. So we're going to buy the milk off. I told Sherry, I said, you reckon I could just get a half gallon of whole milk? Yeah, yeah. I don't good drink stuff. that often, you know. Get that good you know. stuff. So I did. Next thing you know, we're going down another aisle. And I said, hey, what about this? Okay, I'm blowing the budget. Come on, tell it. I'm blowing the budget. Tell That's it. all right. Yeah. That's all right. So we get up to the counter, and it hits me. I'm looking at this buggy, and I looked at Sherry, and I said, we're over. <laughs> I said, we're probably about $50 or $60 the rest. Over. over. And she said, you think that much, 30, 30 or 40, I'd say. And I said, well, it don't matter. We're still over. I said, and if I have to put some stuff back, I'll put some stuff back. So we get up there. It rings up. It's $18 cheaper than what we had in our oh, hey. We went home with 18 more dollars. That may not be a big deal to you, but it's another sign that God is taking care of his people. Uh, I just told you everything was tight, and we have to live by a plan. Right. And now we we just had some things come up that I have to have done, and it was it was quite expensive, and so we're trying to cut camp and you know get the money saved and up and all of that, and uh, so Larry says, hey, what are y'all doing? Um, Friday night. Friday night, and I said. Man, we ain't doing nothing. We're gonna sit at home, you know. We just can't. And I, and I hate saying no to people. I hate can't. I can't. You know, I hate all that. But I know that for the next two weeks, we get two weeks. I think it's next two weeks. 
We have to eat exactly what we bought, and we bought meals. So if we have to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, we're going to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Come on. But we're going to live just by exactly what we bought, yes. right? Yes. I didn't tell nobody that things was tight. No. Nope. Tell nobody that, you know, the cupboard ain't bare, but it, you can see the back of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. All right? Right, right. right. Talk about so, it. So, Brother Terry Harrison gets up here last night yeah. and just blows my socks off. Yeah. Preaching. Yeah. Felt the Holy Ghost all night long. Yeah. So, I told Sherry, I said, now listen, don't get hung up. We need to go home afterwards. Okay? We got to go home. I don't want you to get hung up. So sure enough, I'm ready to go. She got hung up. How about that? Right. She got hung up. And so we finally get out of here and we get home. Church, we couldn't hardly get in the door. Somebody had loaded my porch, and I don't mean a little bit, but loaded my porch up with groceries. Glory. And, and they hadn't been gone too long because the steaks and the meat and stuff that they bought me was still frozen. Now, oh, tell me that God does not see your every need. There's a hedge. This hedge didn't start with me. See, this hedge started with my parents. Yes, sir. My mom and dad put a hedge around us kids. And we stayed right here. And God has put some things in our hearts. And one of the things that I have learned is give it to God. Give it all to God. Listen, if I die tomorrow, if I die tomorrow, I know that my kids have enough in them yes, sir. to pursue this the rest yes, of the way. I don't have a worry about my wife faltering. Nope. I don't. Not because of my relationship. It was like that at one time. But listen, you take a look at my kids. They're getting older now. They have their own relationship with the Father. My wife has her own relationship with the Father. Yes. 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 I put it under the blood. Yes. The blood. Yes. I put it under the blood. Yes, sir, buddy. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to encourage you. Praise just what Sister Cindy said. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how bad it is. But I can tell you this. I've been through some pretty bad stuff. Yes, sir. And he walked with me every mile of the way. Yes, he has. He's provided everything I need. Yes, he has. And I don't believe he's going to stop. No. I think it's uh, I think it was Hebrews I read to you last time that said, uh, Lord, help me get it right. We have not a high priest yes. Yes. that cannot be touched. Cannot be touched. Cannot be touched with our infirmities. My needs. My needs. Yes. Everything. Church, I appreciate the Lord. I listen. I have. I don't believe I've enjoyed a weekend service. That's right. I, I don't know how far back I'd have to go. These men. Yes, they have are absolutely yes. anointed yes. from Jesus Christ Amen. on third heaven. Yes. Do you think anybody can get up here and give out words of life like they've given all weekend? Yes. And just for the record, I believe that they live as close to God as a man can get. Amen. 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 